Hi, it's the second week of Lent, and welcome to Coffee with the Dean. I'm Heather Vosick, the Vice President for Academic Affairs and the Dean of Faculty here at Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. And I am thrilled to be here today with the Reverend Charles Fisher, who is Vice President for Seminary Advancement. Charles, thanks for taking some time to hang out and chat about Lent today. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. So speaking of advice or sharing your own experience, uh, what uh, might you tell pastors, church leaders as they think about issues of stewardship, of development, of finances? It's and you spent some time in the parish, so you know this firsthand. Yeah, I've pastored a church and have done development in various different places. It's not scary work. I mean, mm -hmm. we all have to do it. Uh, we do live in a world where you need money. This is called what it is. Uh, but it's more yeah. important about how do we build relationships? How do we find mm -hmm. individuals within our congregations within the communities in which we serve, who want to partner with us in order to do good work. How do we spread the gospel uh, collectively? And one tool that necessary is money. Uh, let's just call it what it is. And the exciting part is that people know that, so they're not going to be as surprised. I think what's more surprising is that when people recognize that, oh, really, I'm just trying to build relationships and find partners who will want to um, be uh, co-proclaimers of the message of good news, that people are saying, how do I invest mm -hmm. or how do I partner with you? And I think that's really the work of stewardship. Um, we have budgets, of course, and we have initiatives, of course, and we have capital campaigns, of course, but how do we get people to say, I want to invest in what you're doing so that the message of Jesus Christ is mm -hmm. proclaimed throughout the world? Yep, that sounds way less intimidating than we need money. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah and keeps the goal right. and the hope in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thinking about congregations and um, Preaching and worship, one of the assigned scripture passages for this Sunday is the story of Nicodemus coming to Jesus by night. Mm -hmm. How might you preach that during Lent? Uh, I think a lot of people look to that pericope and see John 3.16 and they get excited about the whole touchdown theology. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would more emphasize Nicodemus coming at night. Uh, this idea of this Jewish leader, this Pharisee who's coming to check out this new prophet, this new messenger, this new teacher who's come to town and proclaiming something that's quite different than what they've been teaching. And is Nicodemus coming at night because he's threatened or is he curious? And I think many of us come to Jesus by night, whatever your night may be. And we're trying to find out what is really this message all about. Um, for those of us who have been a bit more legalistic or uh, formed in a particular way, we say there's only one way to understand who Jesus is. But I think what Jesus was saying, there's many ways to understand who God is. And then follow me in terms of let me give you a message that's exciting and new. I think the beautiful thing about Nicodemus is that Nicodemus didn't come just once and just listen to him at night, but he came back two other times. But he comes back and tells, you know, the law says that we need to pay attention to people before we have judgment. I think that's like in the seventh chapter. And then in the 19th chapter, after Jesus' crucifixion, he returns again uh, to anoint the body and prepare for burial with, G with Joseph of Arimathea. That even Nicodemus in his first encounter with Jesus, that coming at night, really that was just a, his first interaction with this prophet messenger and that he came to know who the Savior was in such a way that he too wanted to participate, not in his crucifixion and his death, but also in his eventual mm -hmm. resurrection. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful, thanks. This is part of why Coffee with the Dean has become one of my favorite Lenten practices. I get little snippets of individual sermons as yeah. I get to hear folks like you reflect. Um, and I will... I'm struck by that sense of Nicodemus coming coming to Jesus by night um, in a dark time yeah. that I, I think res would resonate with so many people. Oh, yeah. that, not, that not being the end, but that entry point is a kind of yeah. permissive, grace-filled space. Even for people who think they have it all figured out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, even if you think you have it figured out, and you're in a season of question, wonder, uh, I think it was the beauty of life, right? Mm -hmm. That you can still come to Jesus and say, help me understand yeah. this thing. Nice. And reintroduce yourself to me, reintroduce me to who the Father is and the like. That is one of the nice things about liturgical patterns and getting to enter a season multiple years in a row. Well, Reverend Charles Fisher, thank you for spending time again you, to, to, to talk uh, about Lent this week. And thanks to those of you who joined us. Join us again next week for week three.